Just to introduce myself real quick, I'm I'm uh, I'm Ak Gadan. You know we have Shalom. a few. Go ahead, brother. Sorry. Shalom, I'm um, Ak Dawi. All right, we're gonna have some other folks joining as well uh, very very soon. I know some folks are actually still coming in for work, uh, but we're gonna see if, we're gonna see what we can get through tonight. We're gonna be continuing on uh, on the series. Um, let's see, yeah, uh, the lessons of the lessons from a dysfunctional marriage. This is actually uh, gonna be uh, part four. Judah Nick, <laughs> Judah Nick, yo, yo, yo. hey Shalom, brother Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Hey man, so yeah, we're just getting started, <clears throat> but yeah, we're gonna um we're gonna continue on this uh, lessons from a dysfunctional marriage series. Of course, we did we had to break uh, due to due to the uh, the feast days, wonderful wonderful feast days, feast of tabernacle, and of course we had the last great day, you know as well, and we had the day of atonement, so we had. You know several different things that were uh, that we've celebrated since the uh, the last Bible study. So we're going to go ahead and and uh, fi uh, not finish up, but uh, move forward on the uh, uh, lessons from a dysfunctional marriage. I think this will be um, hopefully the second to last one, so we can get uh, so we, so we can get through it. Um, but uh, hopefully it's been profitable for everyone. You know, last time we did fit a lot in. You know, so it might be good for whoever did, whoever. Uh, that was not able to attend or did not see is probably going to be a good idea to to um to go back and look at part three i think that'll be a, a good idea just so you know we stay on the same page and everyone is following along and understand like understands the uh, the scriptures and the concepts that we bring forth with all of this but with all that said uh certainly if i <laughs> if y'all are decent it'd be great to see some faces on here as well uh, you know if not it is what it is it's all good uh, it's always good, uh, great to see the other uh, brothers and sisters, though. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and, um, and break out with a prayer real quick. Just uh, hopefully, yeah, uh, we want the uh, we want your Howard shot to be with us while we're going through the study. So, Father, th Father, thank you so much for for uh, for being with us today, giving us another day to worship you and to bring honor to your name. You know, Father, we ask you to to give us understanding, and we ask you to help us uh, convey this message and also receive this message meaning your word, the way that you meant it to be received, not with any um, uh, uncommon or interpretation that's different from what your what your original intention, you know, was, Father. We, we want to understand things the way that you meant it to be understood. So we ask you to help us with that. We ask you to open, open up our understanding. Uh, we, we, I ask you to help to help us uh, flow with the word so we're easily easy to understand um, and Again, we ask for a very interactive session and uh, help us to progress through this message. Please bless us and continue to bless all of the members of Awaken Israel as well as all of the Israelites worldwide, Father. And we again thank you for your your plan of salvation for us. In Yahweh Shah's name, we pray. Pray. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. All right. righty. So let's see here. I'm not going to go through a big old. A review because like I said we covered a lot of ground last time but for the most part you know we were talking about um we were talking about the marriages we, were we brought up the um we, we were talking about Adam and Eve we brought up how you know uh, Eve was really the originator of that she was she was the gen the progenitor of the original feminist spirit and we see that uh, also going through the ranks in terms of different religions where we have you know, um, a female and a, son, and a and a son or a child that's being uh, worshipped. You know, we brought up, you know, Ishtar, Catholicism, you know, Tammuz, Mama Africa, all, all of these female deities. All of these things stem from, you know, Eve wanting the um, the position or the power of Adam. She wasn't happy with where she was, um, and uh, and again, we just saw how that 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 spirit which now many people may call the Jezebel spirit has kind of been, you know, spread throughout the ranks over time. And unfortunately right now it's very, very heavy with, uh, with, with our Israelite uh, women. And it's going to end up, well, as far as I can see, it's going to end up, um, I, I clearly see how we're going to end up with seven women coming to one man, uh, asking for the man to take away their reproach and just marry them. Uh, I, I just see how this, I see how that's going to play out. Uh, but Anyway, we went through we went through all of those things. We went through, you know, um, Black Lives Matter. How uh, that was like a whole uh, 
a false narrative that they uh well false advertising because it's really like a trojan horse when they're out for some other things definitely want to re review the uh the uh, the last teaching on that so we can get an idea of what that whole thing was so we don't have to go through it again um and we also again spoke about how uh feminism is really uh not just ruining the um there he is what's up aq it's not only not only is it uh, is it ruining you know um the the minds of our women but it's also uh really ruining marriages and ruining families as well and it's in it's in direct opposition to the most highest order uh the, uh, the most highest order uh, for the family that's just not the way he intends things to do to, to go so sometimes things have to get uh, worse before they get better and i think we're in that worsening part right now um in preparation for uh, our king's return uh, in which everything is going to get better so i think that's kind of where we are right now we talked about um um well, we'll go ahead and get into it right now uh so as we, as we've seen you know yahweh shall created you know marriage as a vehicle really to replicate the holy order uh, the heavenly holy order would be Yahweh, the father, Yahweh Shah, the son, and then uh, the nation of Israel, which is the wife of, of, uh, of Yahweh Shah. And then on earth, we have uh, we have the man, well, well, really, we have Yahweh Shah, and then we have, well, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, man, woman, and uh, and child. Those That's the order, that's the holy order that uh, that uh, that our Elohim uh, has, uh, has chosen and and uh, is trying to continue to uh, replicate throughout the earth and certainly expects expects that to be replicated uh, through Israel as well. But as we all know, we've strayed. We've strayed on so many occasions and we're still straying, uh, but he does have a plan for us. So, like I said, uh, marriage is used as a vehicle to replicate that holy order. Uh, and, you know, in other words, what you can really say is like it's, uh, it's, it's used to replicate his ways because we're supposed to be uh, you know, teaching his uh, his law, statutes, and commandments, and and the culture that he gave to us, and passing that down generation to generation, uh, over and over and over again. So we're supposed to replicate exactly what uh, he laid the foundation of. That was the original um, mission of uh, of Adam and Eve. And of course, we're supposed to be, we're still a lot of things happen as we know, but we're still supposed to be keeping that right now. Uh, so that family structure that he set up it mirrors the uh, the, the heavenly order. Of course, because we have the father, we have the son, and then we have the son's wife, which is Israel. And that's supposed to be married in the family in terms of the uh, the order that everything is in. Uh, and he even told us that we're going to be reproducing uh, families when, we, when we're when we in Yahweh Shah's kingdom. Uh, you, we, get, we can hear, I don't know if we explored Yahweh Shah's kingdom, kingdom too much uh, in part three, but you can definitely look at the... Um, the teaching that we did on the last day to explore the uh, Yahweh Shah's kingdom a little bit more. We do talk about it a bit more uh, in that teaching. So that's a good one for everyone to take a look at as well. Uh, but he does mean us to uh, to create and replicate his order, his ways and his seed. And again, that's why he called us. That's why he called us guys. That's why he said we're gods, because we have the same. We, not, we don't have the same, but we have the ability to create just like he does. But he wants us to create what he created in terms of his order. So we also examined two marriages, um, and those marriages were, we measured those against the uh, the guiding marital scripture that we've been using, which is Ephesians 5 and 33. So we're going to go ahead and pull that up now. Let me get these controls going here. I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to go ahead and get um, Ephesians 5 and 33. Seems like I'm finding my screen appropriately. Good, there we go. All right. All right, cool. All right. Let's just stay going. All right, can everybody uh can everybody see the uh see the see the screen? Yeah. All right, one. Uh, All right, awesome. Okay. So yeah, so can we go ahead and get um Ephesians 5 and 33. Ephesians 5 and 33. It's up on the screen right now. If somebody wants to just take a look. I'll read it. Okay. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Hallelujah. So again, that's going that's the uh, that's the main scripture that we're going through in, in uh, throughout this entire lesson. 
Uh, and that's the one that we're measuring these um, we're, we're measuring these different marriages up against to see if it is uh, pertaining to this particular scripture, because that scripture is very very key. So we saw that uh, that Adam was the first man, uh, the second Adam or the second man uh, from the Most High was Yahweh. Uh, he's called a bridegroom or the man. Eve was the first woman, and the second Eve is Israel. Israel is the second woman or the the uh, the woman that's supposed to be the wife of Yahweh. Uh, and Israel is also referred to as the bride uh, and also referred to later on as the woman. Excuse me. Uh, so we had two different marriages that were meant to establish dominion and continue the holy order uh, on uh, on earth. The first marriage, as we talked about between Adam and Eve, that that, um, situ that marriage had both a dysfunctional husband and a dysfunctional wife. Uh, so that whole mission failed because we know that when you're uh, when you're married, those the, the people are becoming one because they're on a particular mission. We saw that the second marriage, we actually had a good husband in that situation because the second marriage is between Yahweh Shai in heavenly form, um, and we, and the nation of Israel as his wife. Uh, so Yahweh Shai in heavenly form, of course, is a good husband, really a great husband. But we had a dysfunctional wife because Israel was was just off the chain, and unfortunately, still is. But, you know, yet and still, we have a really, really good husband who loves his wife, even to the death. And he's demonstrated that, um, you know, demonstrated that, as we know, uh, through uh, his life here on Earth. So what was missing in those first two examples of marriage? What was missing in those first two examples of marriage? So we're going to see if we can answer that. Uh, so first thing we're going to go, we're going to, go to um, and again, we want to start with some additional marital advice from the scriptures. We're going to go to Ephesians 5 uh, and 25 through 29. Ephesians 5, 25 through 29. So we can go ahead and read if you, if someone wants to read that. Uh, 25? Yep, 25 through 29. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word mm -hmm. that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish mm -hmm. so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that love of his wife love of himself mm -hmm. for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but narrative and chose to if even <laughs> as the Lord, <laughs> even as the Lord, the church. That's a tongue twister right there. <laughs> hey, brother, I understand that one. I would have tripped up over that one too. So all praises, man. So what we see here is that this is that uh, this these uh, these set of scripts right here are pertaining to instructions to the husband, um, and it's just going into a bit more depth in regard to. You know uh, what it's meant in terms of you know loving the wife which was the uh the um the command uh or the advice i should say uh in ephesians 5 and 33 so this just goes into a bit more detail about uh you know the husband portion of that so it details what that love is and how the and, and uh really what the with when the husband is loving the wife when he's giving love to his wife what that's actually doing to her physically and also with uh really down to a spiritual level how that is affecting the wife on a spiritual level as well and when we get down to it fundamentally this is what the wives need this is what the wives need this is the love is the language that they understand so as we all know men and women communicate differently uh, differently husband and wives communicate a little differently so uh, i know a lot of times we get in trouble because we we want to do things the way that we want to receive them but uh, we're seeing even in the scripts the scriptures that the prescription for what the opposite person needs is something different than what um, you know the the um, the primary person or the subject person may need. So we have to get, we have to do things according to you know uh, what the scriptures tell us to do. So uh, the husband is to is to love the uh, love the wife. So of course we just saw that. So um, and the reasons because again if we if we examine this it says uh, you know husbands love your wives uh, just as Christ loved the church christ also loved the church and gave himself for so he sacrificed himself for the uh, for the church 
And we know that the church is really the assembly of Israelites. So Christ, uh, he sacrificed himself for the assembly of Israel, or for the nation of Israel. And so he's also, because he is that mighty representative of a husband, he's also commanding uh, what, this is really not him, but uh, but the, uh, the advice is also to, to mimic uh, his sacrifice and that we're supposed to love um, our wives just as our own body. So we take that, so we, we're to take that um, that love and that sacrifice um, regarding our wives, just like he, you know, sacrificed for for Israel. He was the he was the husband, and in this situation, the men of Israel are the husbands that he's uh, that he's uh, advising that we should follow the uh, follow the example of, of Christ in this situation. Uh, and it says, "So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Uh, he that loveth his wife loveth himself." So we can see really how significant this is because if we ask ourselves, wasn't Eve taken out of the body of Adam? Eve was taken out of the body. So she was literally a part of Adam. The wife was literally a part of the man. She was taken, uh, she was a part of the man. And it's the same thing as, uh, as Israel with Yahweh Shah because Israel is the body of Yahweh Shah. Some people will say the feet and the hands, but he's the body uh, of your of a uh, of a uh, of, uh, of uh, Yahweh Shah, and we know that Yahweh Shah is the head. Is Yahweh Shah is the head. Israel is the body. So again, same body, same one, the whole oneness situation again. Uh, so when we take care of of the wives, just like he took care of the church, we're really taking care of ourselves. It it all works very synergistically. So, and it's kind of funny, man, because uh, like, don't women just expect that the man? <laughs> will step in harm's way in, 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 in order to protect them. Uh, even if something if something goes down, they're just expecting that the man uh, will just step in. I mean, it's even, it's even to the point that if the man doesn't step in and sacrifice himself, the woman kind of even looks down on, on the man a little bit, you know, even, you know, even though uh, he's stepping in har uh, harm's way uh, and he, she's, she's kind of just expecting him to take on that, <laughs> that punishment abuse not necessarily with um, gratitude, it's just an expectation. And like I said, it's to the point that if he doesn't, you know, let's maybe, let's say if he doesn't confront whatever that situation is head on, the woman may look down on him. He may lose respect for him or think of him as a lesser man because he didn't sacrifice his body for her, you know? So it's, it's literally, you know, um, it's kind of, um, you know, just intertwined into our souls already it's already intertwined into the women and we, and we have to understand that christ did the same thing for us but the problem is that you know um they just like we'll say that the women it just they feel entitled to that sacrifice without really considering the man they they're just they're not really considering the the cost or the pain that the man has to endure for that sacrifice when he's sacrificing you know for his wife or for or for the woman and so we can really say the same thing was mimicked with uh, with Israel and Yahweh Shai. We really only think about ourselves. We're not we're not thinking about the challenges and the difficulty and all of the stuff that uh, that the that the husband of Israel, which is Yahweh Shai, has gone through. You know, um, from because he's been here from the very beginning. Uh, he he went through the creation. He went through um, you know raising us up. All of this all of this time that he's been so patient, patiently waiting for his wife to be prepared. And we've been disobedient all of, all of this time. You know, he's um, we've um, disobeyed him. He saved us over and over again. That's, that cycle has, you know, uh, been so many, so many different times, and we continue to do the same thing. And again, we're not we're focused on just uh, expecting that he's going to absorb this this pain and this hurt and punishment because we get he has emotions because that's where we get our emotions from. You know, that's how he, he expresses his, his emotions, you know, uh, definitely more so during the Old Testament. So we know that he gets angry and upset. We know, we, we know that he feels happy about certain things. We know that he's very hopeful when he's expressing the promises that he's given to, uh, to Israel. So we know that there's a full spectrum of emotions that he feels. However, what we do typically is think about us. You know, we, we, we fall for these different temptations. Uh, even though when we do these different things, we're actually going against our uh, our uh, spiritual husband, which is Yahweh Shai. We're going against him, but we're focused on ourselves. We're not focused on 
you know, um, how he feels through the situation. We just expected him to absorb that um, that pain or absorb that sacrifice. So we're feeling just as entitled as many women may feel for uh, their husbands, expecting that their husband is just going to die for him, just going to take the sacrifice, even if it's something that's their fault. <laughs> like if a woman gets, you know, starts some stuff up and a man has to jump in there and try to save her or, or save face or whatever, and could end up being killed over some silliness, you know, but it's, uh, but it's just expected that he's going to step in there uh, and, and, uh, and do that. And, and I understand why that expectation is there. But the problem is that it's not always fully, um, it's not always fully appreciated for for uh, what the type of valor that is. And like I said, unfortunately, Israel does the same thing in regard to sin, and just expecting that, just 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 not really focusing on how deep and how how deep Yahweh was cut in terms of sacrificing for himself, giving, 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 giving not receiving very very much back and we're not focused but we're not focused on him giving we're still asking him to hey can you take this you know um disrespect a little bit more this disrespect from from us sinning against you can you take it a little bit more we're focused on him him uh, forgiving us instead of us focusing on how to doing things to to please him you know so the husband has to put in a whole lot of work and in, 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 uh, you know you how wish i still putting that work work in right now He's going to have to do it again when he comes back in his millennial millennial reign and when he has to put down all of his enemies. So he's still working. He's still working um, and paying that hefty cost in order to cover his wife. So in terms of covering the wife, how did Adam do in this department? You know, did 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 Adam protect Eve? Does anybody know anything about that? How did Adam do with protecting his wife? Anybody have any ideas? Um, <clears throat> I think um, Adam did a great job. I think he did. <laughs> That's why I feel you. I, you know, I have a reason why I say that. <laughs> I think I think he did after they got kicked out. But but uh, I'll say that you know, according to the um, according to the scriptures before that, he might have gotten a little uh, a little lack of days ago. We don't know how much time you know. Um, what was going on out there but in the beginning he was definitely operating operating uh, in his role but eventually he became dysfunctional um, and we're going to see that in the scripture you know how because we have to remember that the whole order the the maintenance of the order and keeping that thing in in line is the job of um it is the job of the of the man and calm, calm. Like said, i think i Salaki King, I think what Adam screwed up, he hearkened unto, well, the Most High punished him for hearkening unto the voice of his wife. And she was out of order. She was in a fallen state. And so not, nothing pure was going to be coming out of her after obtaining uh, from the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So it wasn't nothing, it wasn't nothing good in her anymore. So he hearkened unto her voice and, and it, while she was evil, or corrupt or fallen and he did partake in the fruit she gave it to him she shouldn't have gave it to him mm -hmm. she shouldn't have listened to had a conversation with the enemy God. to for the enemy to make that the, the uh what was um denied by the most high he the, the, uh the satan made it desirable it became desirable she wanted to have this from the text, the script. She wanted to have more wisdom and knowledge. She thought she was gonna have more wisdom and knowledge by by taking in it, knowing good and evil. She wanted to be I a think. goddess. <laughs> and, and and the Most High punished Adam. This is just my, you know, what I perceive from it. The Most mm -hmm. High punished Adam. He stated in, in, in Genesis three seventeen. He punished Adam from listening to his wife, mm -hmm. but at the same time. Uh, Adam didn't have to fall with her, but I think he fell with her because he they was connected. He loved her, and he actually saved her life from being destroyed. In the end, that's in in the end that's true. Let, let's re, let's let's review. Um, yeah, let's break it down. Let's get it. We're gonna review uh, part of uh, part of what happened because I, I agree with uh, with most of what you said. Is one little part that 
pretty much changed everything though. Uh, let me share my screen again. Because uh, we're going to go to Genesis, uh, Genesis uh, 3. Uh, hold on for a second. Genesis 3 and 6. Genesis 3 and 6. I'll Oops. grab it. Get this little thing on. Genesis 3 and 6. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Yes, sir. And, and when and I, the, we're going we're to do three and six, and then we, uh, so we're going to do uh, verse six, and then we're going to skip down to eleven and twelve. Okay. And six and then eleven and twelve. So go ahead. Okay. Genesis chapter three, verse six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. This, the, this is the big problem right there. Gave also to un, unto her husband with her. He was with her. So he should have been protecting her. So this is where he fell off. He was right there with her while, while this serpent was talking to her. This is where he should have been in, in, uh, in protection mode or, or sacrificing himself mode or protecting his wife or, 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 or uh, ordering her correctly. You know, not to be, you know, dealing with that serpent. So this is why um, it ended up being something that fell on fell on the man because he was with her. And like you said, Kataza, he, he actually was not just with her. He went on and listened to her as well. He listened to her and further allowed her to to uh, to go against the Most High and then go ahead and he did the same thing. So it all fell on him because he's he's the uh, he's the he's the coach he's the president of the team you know what I mean? Uh, um, con con. I mean, we, I, I like to play the devil's advocate. Sure. Right now, because he did eat. The Most High gave him the commandment not to touch it, which Adam knew. He was already in the garden. We can't really say how it went because we was not there. Mm -hmm. But she did, we know that from reading from text, she did give it to him mm -hmm. and he ate with her. She is already eating it. She's like biting it, just say, you know, hypothetically, she's eating this plate. <laughs> and she gives it to Adam and he eat it with her. She, she already knew in her mind that it was no good. Her eyes was open before his eye. This is how I perceive it mm -hmm. because she, she was in a fallen state. She mm -hmm. became wise on the evil level, just like, I'm gonna give it to him too. It's like your wife feeding you a plate of poison. Mm -hmm. She know it's poison. Yeah, I agree with and that. And he eats it. At the same time, I think Adam, you know, personally, he would have dealt with the serpent. He would have dealt with Satan and be like, hold up, this conversation ain't going down. You know, get, get, you know, back down. But the most high allowed them, we had free will to play out what happened. Most high watching it. Okay, she was just, she saw the tree desirable. She ate. She of course her her eyes was open because both of the eyes was open, but she mm -hmm. was falling first. Right. She gave, it, she gave it to her husband, not knowing she shouldn't have gave it to him. She was already wrong. She shared, she gave it to her husband. He was wrong for listening to her to partake in the fruit. You know, I I, I mean like they they both because because they both was in a, a wrong state of mind um to think that i don't think adam thought like if i eat it i'm not going to die I, I believe adam probably believed like if i do eat this fruit i'm gonna die because he was okay without her he well, was okay still, without her so even if so even if we think about that part that's still sin because he did because huh. he, he didn't listen to the most the most well, right. Like, right so one way Absolutely. one way or another it was uh it ended up being his response, his responsibility. So he was so, and like you were saying, um, yeah, she that sinful thought may have occurred in her in her head first, just like when he came to Cain and he said, uh, I forgot exactly what he said. We, we we talked about that last time, but he said he basically asked him, you know, why his countenance has, had fallen, right. and that sin croucheth at his door because of the thoughts he was beginning to have. So like you said, we see, you know, Eve was already right there, Adam wasn't there, but but however, as the um as the head as the head as the as the as the man in the in the head in that order if anything in your house falls out of order it ends up coming on you so whether it's huh. your children or your, or your wife the man ends up having to take responsibility 
just like your Howard shot did. Because we know Calm. he didn't deserve to, to die. Calm. Calm. Now let's just do let's just look at it, you know, because it's 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 us and others on the platform and mm -hmm. it's Bible study, so we chopping this down. Right. Now, what if what if, you know, they yeah, they both partook in the fruit, they both saw each other naked. Adam, the most high could have destroyed her without Adam mm -hmm. and gave him another wife because she come from Adam. Mm -hmm. Now, most I can say, you know what? I just, you know, do it a different way. Adam, you was, you, you, you didn't fall. You didn't partake in that with her. Eve would have been destroyed off bucks. But you know what? We have to be thankful for that because Amen. if this is his, um, if this is his model for marriage and he didn't destroy that wife I'm glad he didn't because he didn't destroy Israel which was Yahweh's wife because he uh -huh. could have done that he could have followed that same model and he threatened to because <laughs> he told Moses that you know what I'm saying he told Moses he was going to destroy all of us you know what Amen. I mean <laughs> and that's the sovereignty of the most high because he could have destroyed both of them but the most high not going to back back go behind his work mm -hmm. when the enemy come in to disrupt his disrupt disrupt what the most high have for us because mm -hmm. we've had eternal glory in the garden so the most High said all right i, I gotta put y'all out yeah he was faithful he, he now was it's faithful, gonna be, faithful and focused you know what i mean con now it's gonna be hard on both of y'all y'all gonna mm -hmm. have to work even harder to get back to me because you once had it now you got to work harder this is what this this is what a lot of people Go through in life, but why God do this? Why God, why the most high allow my my father to die or my sister to die or this and this and that or my because of this action right here. You're not hearkening. Disobedience. So now, and it was easy for them then, there. Now it's harder to get back that one-on-one -on -one relationship yeah. with your house because we got we got to thrust through the sin that's mm -hmm. in that we're that after Adam and Eve did Cain and they we born in iniquity, shaping in iniquity. Yep. Now we got to fight because our flesh is weak. Yep, and it all they came from uh, all came all came from um from from not listening. So what if Yahweh didn't listen to his father? We'd be done for. So we have so we have to appreciate that. Um well that's what that well that's actually what we're seeing. Like we're seeing the um we're seeing these dysfunctional marriages. So we saw that we saw in this one, like you were talking about with Adam and Eve, we're seeing that both of them were dysfunctional. You know, so like even if we're talking about the um, the sacrifice, you know, uh, part of it, did, uh, did 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 Adam sacrifice for his wife? You know what? Let's let's read let's read eleven and twelve Genesis three eleven and twelve, and let's see <laughs> let's see how Adam let's see how Genesis. Adam roll with, roll with this situation. Genesis God. three eleven and twelve. This is Genesis chapter three verse eleven, and he said, "Who told thee that thou was naked?" As thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. And this is this is uh, the most high, well, really Yahweh shot in heavenly form, you know, talking to and, and reprimanding uh, Adam at the at this point. Uh, go ahead, brother twelve. And the man said, "The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat." Uh, is that a sacrifice? <laughs> did, did the brother did the brother take a bullet for his wife? <laughs> <laughs> nah, she gonna get you on the bus. He said, he put it on her, but <laughs> that was the fallen state. He couldn't, he couldn't. The bus he made a mind to fight for it because they both saw each other naked. They both were in a fallen state. They both were sinful. <laughs> the most high, because you look at, you look at, you, you, um, the most high held Adam accountable because he, when he, when he was uh, walking through the garden, he called on to Adam, not the woman. Adam, right. where art thou? He, was, he, he already knew that they was in, in the fallen state, and um, he had to deal with the man first right. before even dealing with a woman. Right. That's why women should understand this part of their character. Like when you go, a man and woman go somewhere, the man is addressed. Not saying that the woman is not addressed, but they together, they're one. Right. But that I, when I, if I greet, Dawid, mm -hmm. I'm greeting him he, 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 he with his wife. Right. I greet him. He's a man. Right. And Mr. then business, you know. Right. Doing business, anything you, you know, you can talk to the woman. A woman should not. A woman can't speak for a man. 
Mm-hmm. It's because the most high ain't dealing with the woman right now. He's dealing with Adam. God. He wanted to Lord. move Adam to the side and deal with the woman. Most high does everything in perfect decency and order. Everything is in order. So we so we uh we we definitely see that here and we see again how uh how how Adam stepped out of stepped out of order because Buses weren't even invented yet, but he straight threw up up through her up under one. <laughs> first, he, she was, he was the first one that got thrown under the bus in, in, in history. <laughs> Adam was like, "Take that!" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With no hesitation, bro. He was like, "I ain't taking this one, bro. I ain't taking this for you." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but but we can see how both of them were dysfunctional, and, and of course, if, if you're not, if both people are in a, are in a dysfunctional shit state state you definitely don't have any uh any chance in that in that in that marriage so we saw so we were examining part of what the uh what the husband's you know um responsibilities were uh you know in uh, in terms of how he's supposed to love his wife we saw that earlier in ephesians now we're gonna go back to ephesians and we're gonna see what see some of the instructions for the wife we're gonna go to ephesians 5 22 through 24 hold on let me um, Yes, slacker, right slacker. Um, that whole context sounds like the James one and twenty two. Like, be ye doers of the words and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Because they heard, they didn't do it, and before you even did it, you deceived your own self, then got deceived <laughs> right. again. So, it, it, I love how scripture just loops back to itself. Like, it's ah oh man, it's amazing. It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like circular, you know, like, man, they, they gonna have to get it. But I mean, am I, gonna, am I gonna have to show them another t- another time? Let me give you another example. <laughs> right, the, right. Like that's the patience and the mercy and the grace of the most high right there, you know? It's uh it's uh it's kind of crazy, man. But that's a great that's a that's a great uh great thought though. You're right about that. Um somebody wanna get Ephesians five twenty two through twenty four, we're gonna see, you know, um what the author is talking about regarding a woman right now i can grab it okay all right wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the lord for the husband is the head of the wife even as christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body therefore as the church is subject unto christ so let the wives be to their own husband in everything hallelujah so Thank you, thank you, brother. So, with that, with that, what that is exploring is the reverence part. Before the husband's instructions were explaining how to love his wife, this is explaining how the wife is supposed to reverence her husband, and that comes through submission. That comes through submission. So, um, and so again, we're expl- we're exploring in this part. The uh, we talked about the husband's responsibilities or the way that he is supposed to show that love to the wife. Now we're showing how. The wife is supposed to reverence or respect the husband because these are the things that are necessary in order to make that marriage work so just like the wife needs love the husband needs reverence or respect he doesn't have the same uh craving for love in the same way that she does he needs that that reverence and respect and if that if the two are doing those different things just like we were talking about judah nick that we we're, we're in this constant like sin circle you know, well, if right. if the man is loving and the woman is is uh, reverencing, it's a it's a it's a it's almost like a perfect uh, relationship uh, circle that can we continue the man and woman continue to fuel each other uh, positively and continue to go go down the uh, the, the proper order in regard to uh, being aligned with the Most High uh, in the in the uh, in the marriage. So it's the way that it was designed. So even even people that don't believe even men that don't believe in in the bible and women that don't believe in the bible they have a deep-seated urge for love or need for love men have a deep-seated need for respect so we know that this thing is real it's it's deep it's etched in our soul so that reverence and that respect that's the language that men understand just like love is the language that women understand but see the problem is that you know, we have this uh, where, well, at least we, where we are, we're in this this evil Western culture, and it fools women into thinking that that something is wrong with the submission. But if they understand that submission is the key, is they they they're thinking like this culture has women thinking like submission is a bad word or being submissive is a bad word, and that it's lowly or or degrading or something like that. And it, that couldn't be further from the truth is absolutely not and guys don't even think of it like that so we know that that, we know that that didn't come from 
a, a male perspective because men men want that so not only is it not lowly it's, it's really like a vital element to make to make the, the whole relationship work in the first place so you know without it it's just not going to feel right to the man it's not going to feel the relationship's not going to feel balanced it's something's going to be off and that's going to be that's really going to start the destruction of a marriage if the wife is not submitting or respecting the um the, uh, the husband so if we're considering christ in the church when we hear like when we think about this type of, uh, typically like i said we th we're thinking about you know uh christ or the, or the husband sacrificing for poor old wretched me you know because i i can't get it right you know so i'm so i'm, I'm not focusing on correcting myself i'm focusing you know, on will you please forgive me for for all of my mess ups you know um so i'm not focusing on the correction part so we think again we think very little about the other half we're not thinking about you know how this how these uh mess ups or these sins on a spiritual basis uh and you know just you know disrespect or whatever way that, that the woman is not submitting uh, from a human perspective, how those things are negatively affecting the man. And see, just like Israel is the same way, women have a tough time apologizing. They have a tough time acknowledging, first of all, and then a tough time apologizing for, you know, for the things that, for the things that they've, uh, that they've done, not knowing that that can really help a guy out in terms of being able to deal with this stuff, because that stuff will stick. That stuff will stick with the man. So again, we also see that because of these attitudes that Israel has adopted that 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 same feminist spirit, that same feminist spirit that came from Eve, and unfortunately, is very prevalent in in, uh, in Israelite women, or you know, most people will say black women. It's I mean, in this Western culture, it's man, it's it's, it's like a disease. It's, it's it's terrible, and it's 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 assisting and destroying the family. We we really explored that in the uh, in the last uh, in the last Bible study a, a lot. But again, the, the woman's not necessarily thinking about the pain that she's causing the man, Israel, as a nation. We're not thinking about, you know, how selfish and inconsiderate we are and how we're disrespecting Yahweh with the least of sins, with the least of sins, because the least of sins is, is still disrespecting, you know, um, uh, his order, disrespecting his word, not listening to him, not submitting to his will, you know, so... If we understand how significant it feels when a wife uh, disrespects a husband, we will understand why the penalty for sin is so high. Because it's, it's, it's utter and outright disrespect to because how yeah, how was I as a husband? So it's the so that sin is disrespectful and it's the opposite of submission. So that's why it's a big penalty for for that for sin. It's not a small thing so we can so we're exploring these different things because we can see we can understand things from a human perspective because again it's the it's the heavenly order and order that he set up on earth it mimics the heavenly order so we can so we can kind of you know see how they how they interplay so by the same by the by the same um uh, understanding we can understand how you know if uh, um when a woman gives like a sincere apology when the man hears a sincere apology from from the wife uh in a vow to never do it again and never make that error, uh, error again followed up by a support a support uh, attitude and actions that are supporting that apology that mean that even though he's not happy with the um with her mistake or whatever it means the world to him and is in uh and if and he feels it feels it's a lot easier to forgive her if she's very sincere and she's following that up with her actions and not do, and also not doing again, doing that again. So from a spiritual perspective, another way of another word for that is repentance. So when we repent, we are supposed to acknowledge our error and we're supposed to uh, vow to turn back from it and never do it again. That's the wife apologizing to the husband. That repentance is like the wife apologizing to the husband. So again, that repentance, that apology that submission that's the that's a language that yahweh as a husband understands so and this is why he won't even consider accepting you without it he's not even going to consider it except so this so again we understand so we can hopefully we can understand how important that apology is that how important that repentance repentance is in terms of him 
um, you know, accepting us or forgiving us for our sins. That's why the repentance and that apology is so is so significant because that repentance is supposed to be sincere and it's supposed to be a sincere marker or evidence that, you know, you're sincerely sorry about the, the, um, the sin that you committed, the messed up that you did for being disobedient, for not for not submitting and not following his order. So only with that sincere heartfelt repentance followed up by action, which is required, that's the only way that he's going to forgive you and allow you to continue in the relationship. Uh -huh. so that's, that's why it's that's why it's required because again, your Hawashai is the husband and Israel is the wife. Where, bro? Uh -huh. Yeah, that that that's a those are that's great. <clears throat> we have here a lot of women or a man in a relationship. A woman feels like uh, first of all, we separated from the Most High from being thrown having been thrown out the garden. Then we have the sin. The sin. Uh, opens up so many doors to other sins and it's for that repentance that she have to do that a lot <clears throat> some women think that as long as she don't know I lied they're not truly they're not it's not truly a repentance if they oh. hiding something or covering something or not being in the light of, of the truth like she might like, you know, uh, she did X, Y, Z. She's not, she's never going to confess like you said. And it's very hard because she feel like the husband going to look at her sideways. But if she come clean and repent, she's back in the light with the most high and she's back in the graces of her husband. Mm -hmm. But she don't do that. He's always going to look at her sideways. Like you can't even be truthful to me. The same way how Yahweh look at us and our repent and our sinful state, you can't even be true to me. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm here for you, but they don't understand it. Sin got gripped them so much, they locked in the sin of them. They feel like huh, I'm gonna take this to the grave. Yeah. And then I'm gonna lie. I'm not. He's not gonna know. And not knowing that, you know, just with the sincerity of repenting, ask for forgiveness and repenting. And the 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 Yahweh would see it. Yahweh Shai would see yep. the sincerity. Because it's spiritual warfare that we're dealing, we're dealing with the enemy on one end. And when we operate and not truthfulness, we saying that we giving power to the devil. Mm -hmm. They're saying they're giving power. They rather rock with Satan than be truthful with their husband. And thinking that it's okay. As long as they, as long as he don't know, they feel like it's okay and they can operate in a wickedness. So that's why. So to speak on to continue what you're saying, that's why everything is not everything, but obviously, it's based on the sincerity of your heart. Like, so if we think of it from a, from a spiritual perspective, we might not get it all right. But like you said, he not he knows the sincerity of our heart. He knows if we're trying. So even if we mess up while we're trying, he knows the sincerity of our heart. He also knows if if we are lukewarm, like you're saying. Come lukewarm on. is almost like lying a little bit. You know, it's like, well, yeah, well, no, I, I didn't, I didn't do that, honey. You know, well, I, I did it a little bit, but you know, I ain't gonna never do it, do it again. But she already got plans to do whatever it was. Again, she just, she just keeping them joints on the low. That's lukewarm. And he said, I'm gonna spit you out if Come you're lukewarm. On. He's that's not a full sincerity of heart. He, he, the most I know, he see everything. And the woman carrying on like that with her husband, it does cause him pain. It causes Israel pain. God, God. And, 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 and it's like, and a lot of times, the husband will know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. he gonna, he'll probably deal with her, but the most high going to bake a cake for her because she's not in the sincerity. He might allow the enemy to jump on her line to cause her, you know, to go through this, go through that. I think that we wife spoke on the time she tried to be slick on the Sabbath and got hit. That was a wake up call. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it was like uh, an unjust thing. She was calling herself being, OK, I'm going to do this, do that. And don't tell, don't tell D 
da 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 and boom, the most I say, what? You playing with me? You know what I'm saying? We didn't all try it, man. We I mean, I just use that it. example because that's a great example and she yeah. learned from that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, you know, the most I does that, like, I have experiences. I just like, I just like that story because it was like, you know, the most high don't play. Mm-mm. He do not play. And, and, and sometimes women think they can play games or men think they can play, play with their partner mm-hmm. and their partner being the truth and they not sincere with their partner. You call mm-hmm. it the partner pain. And that's Rather, it could be vice versa. It could be vice versa. The man could be doing it and the woman can be upright and mm-hmm. the man can do that to to hit uh Yahweh's daughter. So yeah, you, can, you can consider that like uh again we have you know different sins, you know, punishments for sins are differently. Some sins are sins unto death. So we can look at some of these mistakes in marriages are sins unto death of the, the death of that marriage. Some of these things are 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 uh, so bad that they can, that the marriage can't survive, can't move on because of these types of um errors. Like you're saying, brother. So that sincerity of heart is uh, is important and also that's why also it's important to maintain that order and for both like you're saying the husband and the wife to understand the rules of the covenant of that marriage the rules of that marriage and abide by them things uh because some of those things depending on how far you step outside of them we all make mistakes but some of those uh, uh violations of the covenant are sins unto sin or uh, sins unto death in terms of the marriage dying with those um with those rules being violated mm-hmm. that covenant being violated you know mm-hmm. so those are those are those are great examples and uh so we can really see how israel has been very unrepentant not really wanting to apologize killing the prophets when the most high is sending somebody to say hey to it to uh what do you call it to confront to confront the wife hey look i caught you i caught you doing such and such no nah, i ain't do it <laughs> you know you know, then and then go and kill it, then then go kill the messenger. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's 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 never going to be okay in a regular marriage, and it's never going to be okay, obviously, with Yahweh Shah at, at all, because it's a serious. It's the covenant is it's a blood covenant. It's to the death. It's a big it's a big deal. So like you said, it's the same it's the same thing for um it's the same thing for men in terms of that that sincerity of a, of apology or repentance. You know, um, it's a sign that the wife is being accountable for her actions, and that's um because these things they're they're a major violation in the eyes of men, just like they're a major violation in the eyes of a, of Yahweh Shai. So, if a woman doesn't apologize for a wrongdoing, it's like she's completely disrespecting the husband, complete mm-hmm. show of disrespect to the husband, and and that's gonna that's gonna completely upset the husband of the upset the husband immediately, you know. Um, so. The fact, like, even if we're talking about the incident on the Shabbat that you were talking about, the fact that um, he that that uh, Yahweh Shah did bring whatever her error was to her attention was awesome because that's chastising as opposed to letting letting someone's sin come to the full, you know, for their and then destroying them, you know. So that's uh, that that so that says that she has some sincerity of heart. She made a mistake, tried to get over. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, something that we all do but that relationship was intact you know what i'm saying so he confronted her sent a prophet we'll just say and hmm. she repented just like the ninevites did you know initially anyway you know what i mean you know so again you see all these things mirror uh, things just like judah nick was saying they mirror things that we that we uh that we see in the uh in the scriptures we can see these things happening in our in our real life so that disrespect that non-accountability that lack of apology uh, that not submitting is a high, high offense to a husband. So, excuse me, ladies have to be very, very sincere with their apologies. They have to be sincere in terms of their um, actions and their submission to their husbands, because all those things um, make the make uh, really uh, make the the relationship concrete. And a man is going to have respect into that. That's going to make the man love the wife even more. That's going to make Yahweh Shai want to give everything why do you think he gave he gave all of these promises he gave all of these promises with the expectation of submission from israel all of these all of these expectations that we're going to follow and do exactly what his word says and that makes the husband overjoyed when the wife does those different things he'll do anything for her. Huh. Mm-hmm. Huh. 
So um, we will also my back, bro. You got something to say? No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So go ahead. Okay, so good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, share my screen again because again the um, uh, the connotation over in this wicked culture is that it's just a negative thing. But if you look at Ephesians five and twenty one, uh, so you want to read that one real quick? I don't know if you can see that, Q. Or Ephesians five and twenty one. Yeah. Uh, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of Yahweh God. Kind, kind. So both people have to submit. So women think about this thing as it, it, again because of this this messaging that they're getting from this feminist movement and this ridiculous culture, they they are believing all of the all of the uh, wax stuff and thinking that submission is something that's a lowly thing. When that's exactly what everybody has to do. What did Yahweh do when he came down here on earth? He mm -hmm. he served. He submitted. He, sub he, sub he served his people. He did the exact same thing. He submitted himself. We're supposed to submit, submit ourselves to him. He submitted himself to us. Oh, Sub oh. Submit yourselves one to another in the oh. fear of Yahweh. Oh. Same thing. So, so everybody has to submit. It's not just women. So the, so, so the sisters, you know, sisters got to get some understanding and the men got to get some, some understanding as well. So uh, we're going to dissect it a little bit more. Let's see if we can go to going to go to Acts, Acts 4 and 12, Acts 4 and 12, get that up, Acts, uh, Acts 4 and 12, so, because we're going to see what was missing in those, uh, in those first two marriages, uh, what was really missing was the reverence, because again, with, uh, with, with um, Adam and Eve, we had two dysfunctional people, and the second marriage, which was Yahweh in Israel, we had a good husband, but we still had a dysfunctional wife. We still had a dysfunctional wife. So let's uh let's get at let's get uh Acts four and twelve. Four and twelve. Four and twelve. Because we we're gonna see um we're gonna see what was missing what what was missing in this relationship. Acts four and twelve. Acts four verse twelve. And again, this is this is showing how just like um. We're just drilling down on how important that submission and that respect is to the man, and we're gonna we're gonna hear about that right now from uh, from Yahweh Shah's perspective. Uh, let's go. Let's go ahead, brother. Four and twelve. Acts four and twelve. Acts four and twelve. Chapter four, verse twelve. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other than none other name other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved con, con. so so if we were to break this down in relationship terms because that's what it is and if we understand that's why understanding that this is actually a marriage it makes things so much simpler so what this is saying is look there is no other man because this is your uh message to us neither is is there salvation in any other no other man there is no other no, there is no salvation in any other man any other nation no one else is is a uh, salvation you're not getting salvation from anybody else there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must where, whereby we must be saved so there is so again it's a it's a statement saying that you know um everything is is this relationship is is him yahweh in israel don't even think about any other name any other man it's very, very possessive. Yahweh oh. is very, very possessive. You know, he's he, he claims that Israel is his and his alone. He he calls he says, "You are my people." And, and how often does he say that? He he says it all the time. Uh, and even we're gonna see again Exodus thirty four. Let me see Exodus thirty four and four, because it just makes these things very simple. Understanding uh, things from a relational or even more, it was more so a marriage context I grab it. very very possessive and see <laughs> women don't like women women these days they don't like these terms but look this is this is the way uh, the, the uh, yahweh shah is the is uh is all about being a, a alpha a sigma whatever kind of man you want to say he's 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 a beefy ma uh, 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 masculine man in, in every aspect that you can think of 
So let's think, let's uh, let's get um, Exodus 34 and 14 and see again how he expresses himself. Exodus 34 and 14. This is the book of Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. He said, look, my name is Jealous. <laughs> So he's saying again, he's it's, this is all things possessive. It's, he's 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 uh focused on his relationship and he's saying you need to be focused on this relationship too. I'm very jealous. I'm extremely jealous. Don't even think about any other man. Don't think about any other any other um you know nation or follow some some uh, some false deity or anything like that. So again, if we break these things down from a, a to a, a human perspective a man has the same ex, um expectation you know reg regarding um regarding his wife has the same expectation regarding a wife um and so so if you look at it like this it's uh <laughs> in, the, in the bible it's, it's uh men can have multiple wives women can't have multiple husbands so the so in other words it's the women that are that have to be committed to the man. The man is obviously obviously committed to his wives as well. But what I'm saying is that these the the women are committed to the man. Going outside of that man, going to another man is a violation. He's allowed to have multiple multiple wives. If we take look look at that from a uh, from a spiritual perspective, we could we could just talk about uh, you know the house of Judah and the house of Israel because he calls he calls um, Judah. Israel's treacherous sister you know what I'm saying he's going to bring it all together for one nation and you could and even if you want to look at it as uh as tw as uh, as as 12 nations because the tw the 12 tribes of Israel are called nations as well so you look at you can consider that um, uh, multiple uh, multiple wives or polygamous you can look at the 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 um the um the parable that Yahweh gave about the ten virgins that were headed to the marriage of the one man. So the point is, is that the women are supposed to be um, committed to the man. It's uh, it's it's the the man is is possessive and committed to the woman, no doubt, because he's made promises to her and he's and he has a covenant with her, and he's focusing on her. Uh, but it's, it seems like just like Eve, it's the it's the ladies that have a bit of a bit that that can be pulled away a little bit more easily, just like Israel can be pulled away from that covenant a little more a little more easily so he's warning us that look i'm jealous i don't play that let's just focus on on, on our relationship so if we think about things and again because right now we talked about the husbands a little bit earlier right now we're talking about the wives in regard to how they have to handle their their marriages the wives got to put some respect on the husband's name it's the name that the that the that the husband gave to the wife he gave the wife his name so we could think about it the same way. Didn't didn't Yahweh Shai give Israel his name? Uh, I think I got a scripture for that. Uh, Genesis thirty-two. Genesis thirty-two and twenty-seven. Genesis thirty-two and twenty-seven. Let's uh, let's let's uh, do Genesis twenty thirty-two, uh, verse twenty-seven and twenty-eight. This is 32, 27? Yeah, 27 and 28. That's correct. Genesis chapter 32, verse 27 and 28. Yes, sir. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thou name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince has thou power with Yahweh and with men and has prevailed. Hallelujah. So that's a renaming right there. And we're going to put a stamp on that right here with Genesis 35, uh, 10 through 12. Genesis 35, 10 through 12. And we're going to see. Genesis 35, 10 through 12. Yes, sir. And ye shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. 
dwell and trade ye thereon. Uh, yeah. You got Genesis 30, Genesis 35. Salakia, King. Salakia. That's all good, brother. Uh, Genesis 35, verses 10 through 12. And God said unto him, Thou name is Jacob, thou name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thou name, and called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply a nation, and a, um, and a company of nations shall be of thee. Kings shall come out of thy loins. 12, 12 as well. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it. And to thou seed after thee will I give the land. God, God. So that's another example of, or him restating that I gave you my name. I gave you my name. And then he also restated uh, uh, some commands be fruitful and multiply and he also come and he also uh, restated the ketubah or the promises of the uh, of the covenant i will give you the land that i promised to abraham and isaac and to and i'm going to give it to give the land to to your seed after you as well so these are all things in the context of a marriage uh so again we and we know how important he says his name is it's, it's even it's even in um in the ten commandments let me see exodus 20 exodus 20 and 7. We, we know how important his name is. Even Christianity knows, well, you know, they have they have the incorrect name, but you know, they talk about that name a lot. So they even get it, how important his name is to them. Let's get Exodus 20 and seven, because this is going to probably be different from what some people think. Exodus 20 and seven. I'll read. Okay. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy Elohim in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain god 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 so uh, who who grew up <laughs> who, who, who what, did, what did you guys think of that as you were growing up what did y'all think that meant because i know i thought it meant something completely different than it actually does any any examples of, of what um, that meant he, uh, uh basically i took it as um thou shalt not take the name of the lord thou god in vain for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take of his name in vain. I was thinking it like they swearing on his name. That's what, that's what I was going to say, King, like swearing to God. <laughs> that's yeah, what I used man. to think I it meant. I swear man. to God, man. I, yeah. Man, <laughs> right. God. And what? using his name, just throwing his name out there. Mm -hmm. Right. And they not really be, and they, and, they, and they can be not sincere about handling his name. His name right. is, uh, is, a, is a mighty, holy name. You can't just throw it out there like that and use it and abuse it. You got to really reverence the Lord Yahweh's name. You can't be like, man, I swear, I'm trying to get somebody to believe me. <laughs> right. Look, I, I swear, man. And, you know, <laughs> right. and I actually both the, the cracks through their teeth, they line going, man. I used to think I used to think it was that that GD curse word as well. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I I didn't know I didn't know he had a name, so I thought if I said GD. That I was using, you know, the most I was name in vain, but it's actually not that. So, taking his name in vain, that's a marital reference. So, don't take my, I'm giving you my name. Don't take my name for, for granted. Put some respect on my name because Israel is his wife. And again, this is, this is in the context of him going over the law, statutes, and commandments. So, he's like, don't take my name in vain. If I'm, I'm giving you my name, you so you so you carry yourself as a representation of me because we're married now. You not know, not disrespecting his name. Con, con. So that's what that's really what it means. It's not about the curse word, which is what I was thinking. And you know, like you said, the swearing and stuff like that. So we so as Israelites and as Israel, we're wearing. We he gave us his, he gave us his name. We're named after him. So he so we're wearing the name. That he's going to give us and we're actually going, going to get another name who you know that those that hopefully, hopefully i can say us that make it into the kingdom because he's going to be renamed again and then he's going to give israel another name names that we don't know at this point but he, because everything is going to be new that's going to be a new covenant at that point we everyone's going to get new names all things are going to be made new again but it's good good oh, i'm sorry brother no 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 i, I salaka king that's good that's a good point a good reference 
because the church don't you may hear it but they don't really teach on it that Jacob name changed to Israel and the new covenant the new the, what the most high is making with him they're making everything new stamping it sealing it so when you talk about Israel people look at you know our name is slander they slandering the most high's name right because he because Jacob is the it, is a prophet that the most high gonna have kings come through from Jacob from uh, it started from Abraham from, from Abraham and Sarah that's the covenant promise that the most high made with them mm -hmm. that through her gonna come king he come he come Isaac mm -hmm. he come Jacob he cursed Esau you know mm -hmm. he already most high already made it clear what who is who who Jacob's twin brother was mm -hmm. so the most high is dealing with Esau so like dealing with Jacob yeah. to, to to stamp it and sealing it like okay your name is going to be Israel now yeah. like you saying Simon's name to Peter Saul's name to Paul yeah. you know and many others in in, in the text so. excuse me brothers can I have an example of using his name in vain I get what you're saying how we thought it well as a Christian how we thought it used to be it's not Maybe what, I so it's not actually like saying something that's using his name in vain it's like you all right so think of think of it like a company right so let's say let's say you work for um <laughs> think about all the Kanye West stuff right so right now he's connected and all we, we know all of this is some BS right but yeah he's, he's connected with these other companies so because he went out and did something that they disapprove of they're divorcing divorcing him because because of the connection that he's him using their name with with their with these products He's using he's because his actions in their minds are using their name their in, name in vain. I got you. I got right. you. Perfect example. Got yeah. you. So, got he's you. Like, so he's like saying act right. Like if your kids go to school and they and they um do some terrible behavior, you gonna be, your parents gonna be like, You disrespected me. Yeah, <laughs> disrespected that was you making the most out, man. You making a day. And you gotta you keep, keep in mind we're, family. You gotta keep Look, in mind we're set apart too. You know what I'm right. saying? We have his name. So we are set apart. So when we do stupid things and sinful things, it's a reflection of the most high. It makes him look bad. And he doesn't like that because yeah. he attached his name. To sort of like he vouched for us. You know what I'm saying? To God. be God. his people. And we here making him look bad. So that makes it even his name. And that makes it even stronger that 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 one of the curses that we're going to be called a byword. That means we're not going to be called by his name anymore. That's a nice release, man. I'm not even associated. Look, other nations. Call him something else. Don't call him by my name no more. Call him a byword. Don't mean I don't. I'm not even. My, your, part of your punishment is that you not. Not only are you gonna forget me, forget who you are. <laughs> you understand how 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 this is now. You not only you gonna forget because you you disrespected me. You disrespected this whole marriage. You, yeah, that's you, deep. I'm gonna make that's you real. Everything. Deep. I'm not even gonna allow other people to call you by your name. You you see the repercussions of that right now. You try to speak who you really are, <laughs> and the ish, the the small has the, the small has calling the call the, uh, the, uh, the 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 ground forces on you. You know what I mean? So huh. I mean, it's a it's a it's a big deal. So that respect on his name. So same thing with the man. Respect, respect, respect. Reverence, reverence, reverence. When you step outside of that reverence, it's a major offense to a man. Stepping outside of stepping outside of that respect or that reverence, or in other words, outside of the law, statutes, and commandments, is a major offense to the Most High. That can only be healed. Obviously, and he still sacrificed for it because he loves so much. He loves us so much because we are, we're a gift from his Father. Um, but the only way we can, um, only way we can, he he will allow his sacrifice to come for us uh, to to cover us is if we are sincere and if we repent with sincerity and change our whole behavior if we don't purge you're getting out of here because i'm not gonna have this happen again so it's a it's a big major 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 deal you know so again that's all that's all showing how how much of a good husband he is um if we step out of line it's gonna be re repercussions for that uh and again this is all about establishing order and maintaining it uh, he, so he's commanding Israel not to step out of line like Eve did. Eve stepped out of out of line. Adam stepped out of line. It was all dysfunctional. So that was the first one. Both folks were dysfunctional. This time we got a good husband. The wife's still tripping though. 
So he still has to continue to reprimand, uh, you know, reprimand the the, uh, the wife. Let's go to Isaiah. Uh, let me get my, we're, going to, we're going to go to Isaiah 45 and 4. Get my screen back up. Isaiah 45 and 4. Isaiah 45 and 4. Yes, sir. Yep. For Jacob, my servants. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee through thou has not. It says, though thou has not known me. What was the last one? So, uh, so, so, Ka, so, so he's saying again that I've given you my name. I've committed to, I've, I've elected you. I've com I'm committed to you. I, I've, I've even given you my name, even though you haven't known me, even though we haven't consummated the marriage yet. What is it called? And, um, what is it called when, when the woman is, um, promised to the man? I forgot what the biblical term is. Something like that. Betrothed. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, so he, so he was betrothed. So same thing as, as, uh, as, uh, as Jehovah Shai's mother, Miriam, she was betrothed to Joseph before they were actually married, you know, so, so, and that's basically considered a strong engagement, virtually almost a marriage outside, of, except for the, the marriage ritual and the marriage and the consummation hasn't happened yet. The actual wedding ritual hasn't happened yet. So he's saying that exact same thing, right, right here. I've elected you. I've chosen you as my wife. I've, I've given you my name even though you haven't known me yet, even though we haven't consumed, consummated the marriage yet. You, so that's why we haven't known him. But we not, we still got to get in line, man, with uh, with the order. So same thing, going back to the attitude of a wife. Um, you know, you know, we're, as Israel, we're thinking that, you know, poor old wretched us, we, I, you know, I just can't get it right, you know, um, but we, you know, we, but we, we need to really understand that Yahweh Shai does not have a self-esteem problem. He knows what he deserves. He knows he's a king. He knows that he deserves the best. So a properly submissive woman who carries herself in order and obedience, reverencing him always is the woman that he's going to take the wife. He requires that. Like that's a strong requirement of his. That's why he talks about it no more. Sin, uh, I forgive you of your sins and sin no more. He requires, he requires that submission. He requires that cooperative obedient wife that stays in order that's a requirement of his so because he requires that he's not re renewing vows with us if we're not if we're not doing that so make no mistake he's not he's not accepting anything less than that perfect wife that takes us to what we talked about over the last couple of lessons meaning the um the wilderness experience the the atonement the, you know the prophetic atonement uh, that thousand year correction that he's going to be giving us so we can get ready for we're trying to get ready for the actual marriage so that we so we, so we can know him we consummate the marriage submission if if we're if whoever's not going to be is going to be tossed out uh let's go to first i'm sorry second corinthians uh 11 second corinthians 11 uh we're going to do uh verse two and three i'll read oh good uh, oh you got it done y'all Quick on the draw, man. I, I, I can't even get there that fast with a computer. Young D is on the job, man. Verse two. Uh, yes, Second Corinthians eleven two and three. Second Corinthians eleven and two. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have expo exposed, espoused, espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So that espousal is the same thing as the betrothal. That's that's the same thing as a as a betrothal. Espousing someone and, and betrothing someone is the same thing. You're committed. It's, it's like a it's like an engagement. It's like an engagement. Go ahead, brother. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent be gilded, be gilded Eve through his subtility. Subtility? Yeah, subtlety. Sub subtility. Sub yeah. sub uh, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Kind of, kind of. So we see that it, we see that once again he referenced foolish Eve. 
because of what she did, you know, back in the day and how she corrupted everything and messed things up and she got tricked or beguiled, you know, by in that situation, the serpent and what and what we're in right now, we're in a beast system and also the serpent is the the god of this world currently that we're in right now. So his tricks are all around uh all around the wife uh, constantly right now. So that's why we have to be sober and vigilant so we don't fall for these different tricks and get caught up just like Eve did. So, you know, and, and again, he's talking about these things because he's only accepting a chaste version, completely dedicated to him, to one husband, not yeah. any other man. Uh -huh. Go ahead, bro. And that makes me think of uh, the scripture in Revelation where it talks about the 144 being all virgins, mm. pure. You know what I'm saying? God. It's not that they didn't actually, they have to be men that never had sex. That's not what he's talking about. The whole context is not committing adultery, spiritual fornication, that kind of thing. So the 144 will be all committed to Hamashiach. They'll be right under him. 100% from, from, the, from the beginning of that, um, of that One, new age. 144%. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I like that even better. <laughs> I like that even better. That's definitely much better. See, that's why you need your brothers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, man. <clears throat> so, you know, anything anything less than that total commitment is is not going to work. That's going that's anything less than that total commitment is lukewarm. Therefore, it's out of order. It's either going to be killed or it's going to be left outside the kingdom. So that's why these things is, is very, very important. And we and we get a chance to practice these different things in our in our uh, marriages from a human perspective. So we see these things are just kind of, you know, uh, uh, you know, kind of um, mirroring each other. They're paralleling, you know, each other in terms of his relationship with Israel. So, you know, this name thing, this jealousy thing, this disrespect like that, all of that, all of that is a uh, is a very, 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 very big deal because this is the bride that he sacrificed himself for. So he, he's done all of these different things. He created the world for our sake. Everything he's done for our sake, and you think he's gonna accept some disrespect? Nah, dog, <laughs> it's not going down like that. He came out of heaven, he lowered himself, he he, he served, served us, he got tortured on several occasions, he got murdered, all these different things. He, you know, he, he did all these things, painfully sacrificed himself for us no other woman he didn't do it for any other woman he's completely focused on who he's espoused to who who he's betrothed to who his father gave him as an inheritance and as a gift so it's not a light thing so sin is truly not a light thing because we have to think about every so we again we think about how we're messing up but what we really need to be thinking about is how much he laid on the line and how much we're disrespecting him with every sin that we do it's a it's a big ball of disrespect, a big spitting in his face. It's spitting in it's a wife spitting in a husband's face. And, and he's not he's not okay with that. So, you know, after everything he's done for us throughout time, he expects and demands that appreciation. And even as a and even as men, we know how much is how I mean how, how does it make you feel, men that are married, when your wife expresses appreciation for something that you've done for her? It was good. That joy means means the, everything. It may change. I mean, you, you could be having a horrible day. You might have just got jumped <laughs> by somebody. <laughs> but if your wife comes in, well, you still you might you know you might be have, having the ice bags on you. <laughs> but when she says that she appreciates something that you did, bro, it's gonna change your whole mood, even even though you black and blue. You know what I'm saying? That's how important that appreciation or reverence or respect is to a man. Just like. The, just like her feeling that love from her husband, her giving that respect or appreciation to the man sincerely means the world. So we, if we transfer that same inclination of understanding in terms of our dedication to following the law, statutes and commandments and following after and having faith in Yahweh as our sacrifice, we see how important it is and how everything rests on that. Everything rests on that because the whole marriage rests on that, you know? So this is why the punishment that he handed down to Israel is so harsh because he's done everything for us and we disrespected him. So Israel has been wicked, been vile and a very unappreciative wife to her husband. Uh, and we've gone above and beyond to provide, he's gone above and beyond to pr provide us with everything and we still disrespect him. So he literally gave us the world and only, the only thing he's asking for is, to, is, is compliance. 
for submission, for respect. You know, like the woman might, the woman requires the man to be paid, to, to be able to provide for, to be able to protect her, all these different things. And the man is always saying, look, I just want you to look attractive to me and I want you to be submissive to me, show me respect and, and do these other traditional things. That's, that's a lot less than what uh, she requires or she wants in a, in, a, in a man. So we see from Yahawashah, he's done all these different things and more as a husband. So he's looking back at us and saying, hey, I want you to, I, all, all I'm asking you to do is fall, fall into these traditional roles. This tra these traditions that I gave you, the culture I gave you, the law, statutes, and commandments that I gave you. And that's going to make you a chaste version in, 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 uh, in, in his mind. So he knows what he's deserved. He knows what he deserves. He's gone through a whole lot to get to, to, to get to it. So that's what he expects. And he's expecting a chaste, clean virgin. If we're not, then we know we're not going to make the cut. Let's go to um, uh, Revelation. And we're almost done here. I know we're out of time. Out of time. But I'll go to Revelation 21, 2 through 5. Revelation I'll grab it. 2 through 5. Revelation 21 and 1 through 5? Uh, 2 uh, through 5. I, I'll grab it. You got it, King? Go ahead. Okay. Revelation chapter 21, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahweh out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. We going through uh, 7, you said? Through, through 5. Through 5, Salakia. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and Yahweh himself shall be with them and be their power and the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold I, I make all things new and he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Con, con, con. So that's actually a picture, again, Holy City, New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. That's actually almost like the bride walking down the aisle in a, in a traditional Western style wedding. When a woman's con. walking down the aisle to, the, to get to the, the marriage, whatever that they call that, I should know. <laughs> but you know the whole ceremony, you know what I'm trying to say. But that's coming out of coming down the aisle, coming down from heaven. His 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 beautifully adorned wife that he's been waiting an eternity for, you know. So this is actually um, after his thousand year reign. This is actually going into the um, the father's kingdom or the actual kingdom um, that's prepared. You know, my father's house has many mansions. This is this is us preparing to go into his father's house. So this is actually that's uh, the new covenant right there. The new covenant doesn't begin until the marriage. The marriage is not until after the wilderness period, after he's put down all of his all of his enemies and stuff like that. So we un we have to understand that he's been waiting all of this time. That's why revenge is in his heart, because he can't wait to come and wipe the you know wipe the slate clean for his wife. And he's man, <laughs> he's he's anxious for the honeymoon, like like most husbands. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If y'all get my drift, you know what I'm saying. He, the, the brother's anxious for that. He's anxious. So even if we look at, um, you can actually see the marriage commitment. If we look at verse, verse, uh, verse three, it says, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of, of Yahweh is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and, uh, Elohim and, and, and uh, Yahweh himself shall be with them. Well, Yahweh shall himself, Yahweh shall himself. Uh, will be with them and be their uh, be their God. What to say? So if we understand that part, we can go back to um, Genesis, and we can see how again he sticks to his own word. He sticks to his own word. So remember, the tabernacle of of Elohim is with men. The tabernacle uh, ta the tabernacle of Elohim is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his pe his people. So this is uh, Genesis uh, two. Excuse me, 24. Uh, anybody want to get that real quick? Genesis 24 and... 2 and 20. Down. Genesis 2 and 24. Oh, Salaki. Oh, good. Genesis chapter 2, verse 
24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Con, con. So we see the exact same thing. The tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. That's mean, that means and, uh, and God himself shall be with them. That's the union. That's becoming one. That's dwelling with them. Same thing is here. Um, the, uh, they, the the son is going to leave the, the his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So we can see how is the is the is written of him in the volume of the book. It's written of Yahweh in the volume of the book, and he still obeys his laws, statutes, and commandments. So um, we're gonna we're gonna stop right there for today. But again, that's just explore. That's continuing to explore the um, the dysfunctional marriage. And today, today, what we did was just go through some more regarding the uh, how a woman is to uh, reverence and respect her husband, and how a man is how a husband is supposed to uh, supposed to love his wife. We just got into more details, and we also again saw how those things coincided. They were pretty much parallel with uh, you, you know Yahweh and Israel. Uh, as compared to a human uh, husband and wife, a human Israelite husband and a human Israelite, you know, uh, wife. Uh, so we'll stop right there for right now. And uh, we're going to pick back up, uh, uh, I think, with the with the uh, last part, if we can get through it next time. Um, and then we'll, you know, we'll be going over something else. But um, do we have any questions questions so far about what, about what we went over with today? So let me ask. Mm-hmm. What about the women? Women, because there's more women on the planet than men. Mm -hmm. um, those women that don't want to be married. Is that like saying they're rejecting who you know, our power is? Well, not wanting to marry. I don't necessarily, I, I wouldn't necessarily, uh, well, I, I, I don't necessarily know the answer to that, but I will say that there's a prophecy and I, I see. We spoke about it very early, very early on. Like right now, we have we have a, an epidemic of women saying, "I don't need," especially our women saying, "I don't need no man. I can do all this by myself. I can have my own my own children. I can do everything. I don't need a man. What is a what is a man good for?" But then we see that there's a prophecy. And I don't remember where 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 it is, but it says there's going to be seven seven women are going to come to one man and say and say, "Look." You know, they still have. They still, we go here. They still have some like, some of the independence mind. Look, I'll bring my own. I'll make. I'll eat my own food. I'll I'll wear my own clothes. Just mm -hmm. take away my reproach. Con. Uh, and, and, and 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 take and let me have your name. So it's a reproach not to be married at that point. And and and, and like Don said, that is a future prophecy. Um, so that shows it's going to be rare. You know, men are going to be rare, like um, for women to do that. So it shows that they all are going to be in order in that day. They all going to know their role based on that, what that scripture is saying. So I definitely see them wanting to marry because that whole westernized mindset is going to be gone at that point. Begging you know what I mean? <laughs> the most I say you're going to make the Israelite man finer than gold. You know what I'm saying? He's going to get rid of a purge out the knuckleheads on the earth. And the women are gonna be able to realize, you know, who the Most High is dealing with, and they're gonna want them to feel. They're gonna want the men of the Lord to feel protected to take away their reproach, like you Don said. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, a, uh, it's gonna be a, 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 ser a serious thing. You know, um, it's gonna be the total opposite of uh, of what we, of what we um, are saying, uh, what we're saying today. Let me see. Hey, uh, let me see. Let me see if I. Can... You want to go to that's uh, uh, for anybody... Isaiah chapter four. Oh. Excuse me, Salaki D. Um, Isaiah 4 and 1. Isaiah 4 and 1. Right, yeah, and that's it, what the scripture is. That day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our, repro our reproach. God. God. All and, right, now. You um, know, well, uh, uh, and you know it's, it's a scripture in Second Timothy, um, Salaki, First Timothy two and fifteen. It talks about how the woman, you know, she continued basically, um, 
in, if she's in order or whatnot, it talks about she'll be saved in childbearing. Just roughly f- paraphrasing. Mm. If she continues in faith, charity, and hope, uh, holiness with sobriety. So, the how can the earth populate without them? So, if they don't want to marry, what are they? You know, n- no offense, but what would they be good for? Right. Their job is to hold the babies. You know, populate, be there for the man. So they have to. If they don't want to marry, that's completely out of order. That's a rebellious spirit. From the and primary, that is, that's not going to be, yeah. From, from the original commandment, what kind of command, which is which is uh, what was the fill the earth and multiply? That's right, you know what I'm saying. And so, so we even remember that Jacob's wife, I uh, forgot which one, Leah, not probably the other one, she her womb was closed up and it was a reproach Rachel. to her. Rachel, mm-hmm. Rachel's womb was closed, yeah. Same she thing with Sarah, yeah. So huh. they're gonna get it in that day, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, man. yeah, they definitely go, they gonna want to marry. <laughs> I'm gonna share something. I'm gonna share uh, a great nation. I'm gonna share something else because I think this is what we what we got coming our way. Hopefully, there's no cussing in it. I can listen to it. Realization: These past few days have been so hard for me because you know how men say that women have toxic feminism and like you'll get to a certain age and like no one will want to marry you and no one will love you, like. I feel like I've gotten to that point, guys. Like I was so hung on to this feminism thing, and Feminism. I missed out on marriage and on children. And now, like I'm at a point in my life where, like, I'm so bitter. I'm so jealous of people who have marriages because they are so happy, Reproach. and their husbands don't even cheat on them. Reproach. And like men are just the best, you know. Like right now is when I'm realizing, like, I can't do without them. And right now I'm like, I don't care like if you are rich or poor, tall, dark, handsome, ugly, I don't care by the way. As long as you're a man and you're breathing, like that's the only qualification I need because just, I'm just so desperate just for a be husband. Breathing. And there's a lot of pressure around me. So if you can do all the qualifications is all you gotta do is be breathing right, bro. for a husband <laughs> everybody the qualification got a i need because i'm just be so breathing, desperate for a husband because a lot of pressure around matter. me so i gotta put it well, that's, tall, that's, 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 that's gonna be a lot of and women. right now i'm like no, just, i don't care like, like if you are rich or poor tall, i gotta hear it one more time bro. humbling themselves before the most i have a husband man I gotta hear it one more time, man. Hold on for one second, bro. I, I'm playing DJ. Hold on for one more second. Let's hear that jam one more time. All dark, handsome, <laughs> ugly. Me, I don't care, baby. No, you're crazy. As long as you're a man, <laughs> hey, and you're uh, breathing. There are many more. Like, that's the like only that. qualification I, I think, need because I'm just so desperate that, for a husband. And there's a lot of pressure around me. Various so. women that were coming give, out. You know, they trying to. Uh, they coming clean. They coming correct. Like, look, I realized and messed up. And it's a lot of women gonna be like that. A lot of women like that now today. Yeah, but that's what and this is what feminism is going to produce. You even heard her say it. She started off saying, you know, I I started off in this feminism thing, but now I'm so bitter, I'm jealous. All of you know these different friends have marriages or or babies. This is what this feminism is going to produce. It ain't gonna be like, hey, look at me shaking your butt, wearing no clothes no more. Look, please do anything. <laughs> Look, just be breathing, please. <laughs> Damn, they're gonna realize how real the Most High is, and they're gonna want. They're gonna know they're gonna need that, a man to get in. The that game. literally sounds just like that Isaiah four yep. one with Katazia read. It's coming. Let, let me do. I will do this. We'll get else. It doesn't matter. Just you know, marry me. <laughs> That's coming, man. man. That that is coming, bro. That's definitely uh. Uh, a taste of what's to come that's for sure and that's coming man so look they ain't gonna be <laughs> it ain't gonna be like hey no i'm not doing no polygamy forget all that no i'm not and, and nah <laughs> is that the resistance the uh <laughs> like the, the resistance they're gonna be number 21 on the line huh <laughs> <laughs> with no with no complaints they're gonna be like 21 on the line with no complaints do, man do y'all think we starting to see that now with women proposing to men that was, a, I think, a trend going on the last couple of years. I, I, I don't think we're quite there yet. I, I have seen some of that, but I think some of that is them taking, taking control. But the desperation uh, ain't hit. The, the desperation hasn't hit yet because this is that's still that boss B 
threatening the man to gotcha. get married. Calm, thing. Calm. Right, right now, gotcha. they're focused on themselves. What can somebody do for them? They don't have to bring nothing to the table. Whereas, whereas she's like, look, I will bring everything, brother. Look, you could be paraplegic as long as you can <laughs> bring it. <laughs> she is down. You can have one eye, one arm, one leg. <laughs> She Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I want man. your name. I'll brush your teeth for you. You know what I'm saying? I'll wipe the sleep out your eye because you don't have no arms. I will do it all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's down, bro. So so it's coming like that. So that's a is that is that not a submissive woman? Hey, yeah. Man, that's a God, woman that realized she missed the train about 10 times. And then <laughs> finally and, and the eleven one ain't coming until next year sometime. She gotta wait. And but it's, you know, the, it's gonna come to that though. If the it, most high say it, then it is. If we believe in this truth, then every word that the most high speaks to us as his sons, as his kings, and he wants us to rule and replenish the earth and have dominion over it. Uh we may not have dominion over it now because Esau cutting up don't what he want. But when his kingdom come, his will will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven he's sitting on the throne it's going to happen it's going to come to pass and so even this and so even this prophecy like you know it sounds like hey the men are the men are getting everything but no this is a blessing for the women too again uh, again the women want that just like they did back in the day the women want this they they want it and so you know and the other way to look at this because again remember we're paralleling uh human marriages to the spiritual marriage between Israel and Yahweh Think about when we out there on the block right now. They we, we ask them, do they care? They walk a bias, they cussing at us sometimes, throwing up fingers, blah, blah, blah. So think about how 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 <laughs> Israel Israelites with that same attitude toward Yahweh Shah. Because he's gonna be purging them out. And you know, when when we get into this, when he when he brings gathers us all together and they see this, this ain't no joke. Let's see. Let's see that pride of Israel go away, just like the pride of the fem, the feminist woman uh, goes away. The pride of Israel is gonna go away, so we can come into submission under Yahweh Shai in these last days. It's a parallel. See what I'm huh. saying? Huh. Huh. God. Huh. God. Okay. Well, um, hey, well, if, uh, if if no one has anything else, I don't want to keep you, your brothers uh, and sisters from snoring. Hey, can, huh? can I share a quick dream I had with y'all? A, a couple of. I think a year or two back, real, real short, real short sure, dream. Sure, 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 bro. So, I remember um, there was an elder woman, right, on my side of the road, mm -hmm. and she was looking for a husband. I somehow I just knew, right? You know, in your dreams, you just know, but nothing's being said, but you just know, right? Mm -hmm. And then there was another younger woman who was approximately my age, and uh, I basically went across the road and hollered at her. And then she basically rejected me. And I remember something saying in my head, this she got this independent woman spirit or something. And then I, as I was walking away, I said, in that day, you'll see. And now today, I'm finally realizing what it means. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. fi it's finally catching up to me. I'm like, wow. Yeah. So the older woman is going to be hit to it first, as we've just seen. And then the younger ones, you know, like let's say two decades down, are going to finally catch on and be like, damn, this, yeah. yo, this is this is serious now, man. Well, like what you what you and, and Andre are saying, right? So if y'all look up, if y'all if y'all look up, um, like do a little YouTube search on women hitting the wall, you're going to see a bunch of it because they right now they're not getting it. They're not feeling it until they get into their you know basically early to mid 40s that's when they're starting yeah. to feel it you know what i'm saying um and at that point they're out of contention because you know you can't really have babies blah 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 so the sadness and everything and the, and the lack of attention because they feasted on attention right now especially with all the social media and it seems like a lot of ladies can't tell the difference between attention because of sexual reasons or just you know um as opposed to attention for i want to be in a relationship with you because the social media they blurs want to feel validated. They want to feel validated, but they don't have no worth to feel. They don't have no worth. A lot, a lot of men false are waking up as well right. to see that uh, red pill. Yeah, I can't. I can't. You're not. It's almost like the guys waking up saying, "You know what? You're not worth it." Right. No validation. They the women looking for the validation 
So they give they give all that they know that they have, their bodies. Yeah. They the cute face, they want to be like, oh, I'm I'm nice looking, or they give their bodies to be validated, and men don't even want it. Be like, you know what? They women like giving it away. Yeah. Men want it like no, nope, nah, because they don't have no value of who they are unto Yahweh power. That's right. They don't respect themselves. That's right. That that's 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 one hundred percent right. And like you said, so so you're right. It's those uh those two critical uh those two critical components of, of both the uh, the men because it's going to have to be the men first because the men are going to have to stop paying attention to them. And giving them gifts and stuff for that, because that all of those things are going to have is that's what's going to be the harsh reality to uh, to make them wake up. And so, Kevin Samuels and, woke a lot of men up. Hmm? Uh, uh, Kevin Samuels, God bless so he woke a lot of men up to how these women are today. You know, he yeah. he speaks about you know for the women to settle down being married, but these women you hear on a lot of his segments, a lot of the women have got uh, divorced their husbands. And now they look. They on. They on a. They on. They on a social media platform, looking for a man to validate them, and they not getting it. Yeah. And he's telling them why they not getting it, and they still can't see. They they still sleep. And a lot of men waking up like, you know what? I wasted my time with this woman. She wasn't about nothing. That's that's. You know, that's that. Go ahead, Salah. No, I was I was a, I was agreeing with you. I was a, I was a absolutely agreeing. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me with. With with uh, with what you're saying, I think that's I think that's correct. So it's, so it, it kind of goes back to the to the um, to the same thing because for like you said, I mean to be honest with you, man, a lot of a lot of women right now, and it's it's a lot of, it's a it's a lot of stimulus. They're being fooled just like Eve, just like Eve was. So these things are false, but because they're promoted in the social media and on a you know and in the movies, men are made to look d- dumb, women are, women are made to look like the prize. <clears throat> You know, um, and obviously they are actually they're actually getting his attention because you know their DMs are being filled up with all kinds of desperate guys and all kinds of you know all, all these different things for physical attention, but their substance, many of them, not all of them, because there's still some great women out there, plenty of great women out there, great wives out there that are that are uh, that are willing to do what the uh, Most High calls them to do, but the majority of them, unfortunately, right now are being uh, brainwashed and a little on a delusional side guys too i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that the guys are not because this you know the, the guys are the guys are tripping too the guys that are tripping they the guys the men are realizing hey you got these women they want valid they want to be validated looking for attention they mm-hmm. get with a man they may find a man mm-hmm. and and it becomes a combative relationship not saying that it got to be physical but verbally it's like the man can win for lose with the woman, and now society have it that men 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 are, men are, are like kind of like fearful of women because all she got to do is doubt nine one one. A lot of men had to go through that, realizing this woman is psycho. <laughs> you know they lie. The women are lie. Unfortunately, they they do damage to if he if he if he's uh. A validated man, where, where he like got, uh, he he gets attention from these single women that's cutting up. It makes it easier for him to like, you know what? I'll take my time and choose and pick. Cause the last one I had, she bust all my windows out, flat all my tires, two bricks through my window. Now you know, and they and the women are not held uh, accountable mm-hmm. for it. They they use a, uh, um, they use the feminist wows to justify their actions or they you know they 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 play the role of this sense the oversensitive or he hurt me or you know I, I lost control um and they not and other women are holding them accountable for their actions they saying girl you don't need them and <laughs> right. they my girlfriend is just lonely been lonely for and, and I, I'm chasing after men that are already spoken for, and mm-hmm. uh, they be like, and they always, the women always say he cheated, cheated, cheated. But it's coming to the fact that, you know, um, he, you know, uh, if he, if the man knew who he was, right. and a woman knew who she was, it, it won't be no cheat. Right, man. At all. But women now, when they be the boss, they feel like they the, they, they the, they the, they the aggressor, and wearing pants. <clears throat> 
uncouth and their attitude got the men simping. They got the men that looking for something simping, and those men are finding out she's dangerous. Yeah. She's no good. She 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 she's taken versus adding. And then they don't have a relationship with the most high. They unequally yoked. So men are waking up, men, women are waking up too. Men are waking up too because you're not equally yoked. If you're not equally yoked to the most high, it's never gonna work. It's never gonna work out. It's never, even if they both don't believe, it's never gonna work out. Mm-hmm. If one believe and the other don't, it's no the most high say in the scripture, do not walk, give us someone unequally yoked. You wanna be equally yoked. You wanna be equally yoked so it, it'll be easy to get along, easy to pray together, uh, stay together, do things together, in the most high, representing each other, submitting unto one another, as we've read. That's right, you know, you'd be on, excuse me, you're on the, um, on the, uh, on the, um, on the same, on the same, you know, uh, you know, mission and stuff like that. And, and things will be, uh, things are, things are a lot more cooperative. You're going in the same direction, you know, like you were saying. So you can even, um, you can, you can even look at, look at, um, um, you know, things from, from, from an Israelite perspective. Because right now, like you said, something like real key, like men are, men are finding out who they are. And what are we always asking people when we out on the street? Do you know who you are? We're asking men and women that. So as we, so as we come back to who, you know, what, who we actually are, what our real, you know, uh, calling is, we'll begin to develop that pride, get back into order. And this is what your Howard Shah is going to be calling for anyway. It's just at, at a certain point, like he's giving us that, he's giving us that patience right now at a certain point, you know, he's going to step, he's going to, he's going to, you know, step on the pedal. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, hey, uh, like, you got to do it right now. I, I'm so, I'm so, I'll be, I'm so thankful unto the most high. So thankful. Thank him abundantly that he has waking me up uh. and I go, I make it my business uh, to speak with women. Cause I always been like in the world, I was like no good mm-hmm. in the world. Womanizer, you know, chasing, doing all the wild stuff that men do not not knowing who they are. But now that I know where I am, it, it, it's a pleasure to Jesus. speak with a woman and speak cordially, right. not looking just to see how awake they are. And and most ninety seven percent. Cause it's very little that I find I, I may meet a woman or know a woman that's actually in the truth. Even the women that I know already, a lot of them are lost in the Christianity, right. not knowing who they are. And it gives me great pleasure to be able to speak with them. It's a it's it's it's, it's like a platform of teaching them who they are, being known uh, that I I am a prophet. You you men of prophets. It's, 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 I'm related, not just with women, but with men too. And mm-hmm. I don't even have to get into a debate. It just, it feels good to know who I am and be able to speak to them and they don't know who they are. And they think they know. And mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, you're so far right. You're so far mm-hmm. left. You would have no clue. Like, and I look at how they dress, you know? look at how they dress. You can look at the hair they have on their head, mm-hmm. the lashes they got. Butterfly eyelashes, mm-hmm. the makeup caked up, <laughs> uh, the raptor claws, <laughs> the provocative dress. Oh my goodness, man! Dress where they showing cleavage, they showing tramp stamps, and they doing so much. Then they could be corporate women, and they have no clue. And all they doing is copying each other. Like they do the, all of them do the same thing. It's not even like a bunch of individuality, bro. And that lets you know that they are being brainwashed because they all just following whatever they see. Vessels. It's like like <laughs> whatever is being poured into the vessel. That's what that's what they do. So this is why we have to, you know, um, we have to correct. We have to be the correct vessels and kind of teach. But to start not teach, but you know, we have to we have to operate in that function. The husband has to come back and operate in that function to get, oh. you know, the um, to get the righteous wives. I'm gonna show uh, something else. I think this is the right clip. I'm not 100 sure, but it speaks to something that you were talking about a little bit earlier on. Let me see if I can uh, let's see if this is right. Uh, let's see here. This kind of hit me. Incredible. Now. Sorry about the language. I've been on their side this whole time. None of them were with me. <laughs> no, be honest, be honest. If I had six million subscribers, two million on IG with a check mark, 
be honest, you'll be on my <laughs> would you not? But since Aaron I have thirty K in the bank right now, <laughs> that I've been saving up for the last fifteen years. <laughs> Since I only have a thousand on IG, y'all not with me. So you know what? I'm gonna get in my bag. I'm gonna get six million subscribers on YouTube. Okay. I'm gonna get two million on IG. Okay. I'm gonna have Mark Wahlberg yeah. come up to me. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna have Mark Cuban be like, "Yo, I know you." Yes. I'm gonna have a billionaire say, "I know who you are." Yes. I'm gonna be courtside at an NBA game. Go. And get a pair of the future. So you know what? I'm not gonna let you guys dictate about me. I'm red pill now. Nothing's waking up. Uh, just like that. so just like you were talking about that was a brother waking up to all of the lunacy because if y'all would have saw, seen him uh some of the stuff he was saying before he was basically bowing to whatever ridiculousness those ridiculous women were saying and just just <laughs> he was just saying some crazy stuff so i just saw that clip today actually i was like hey this actually might fit in with, with uh what katana's you're saying in terms of a brother waking up and like hey i'm not i'm not dealing with that outlook anymore <clears throat> I'm gonna build myself up and I'm gonna focus on myself. And as the brothers continue to do that, they, that's, that, that's gonna be a less attention to them. And y'all know that typically when a woman's not getting, when you're ignoring her, that's when she's like, hey, what's what's going on? That's when her interest drives up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So again, seven women to one man. So this is just, so the feminism is definitely, um, it's not cool, but it's part of the process. I consider it prophecy at this point. Now that I, now that I, I have a better understanding of that, you know. Well, I right, man, I know it's late, uh, so uh, anybody want to pray us out? Well, anybody, anybody have anything else to say? I should say that. I should say ask that first. No good. All right. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been fun and interesting. Appreciate you, brothers. Um, you want to, you want to pray us out, Q? Calm, calm, calm. Thank you, Father, for this evening. Thank you for having us come together. Uh, you say wherever two or three are gathered, you are present. And we thank you for uh, enlightening us with your word, with your truth, giving us knowledge, giving us understanding, giving us wisdom. Uh, those that were not able to make it, Father God, maybe had intentions to make it. Uh, bless their bless they souls, their hearts, their homes, their families, um, loved ones. Father, I ask that you just uh, give us a peaceful night tonight um, and that you have your angels dispatched around our, our, our loved ones, keeping them, protecting them. Uh, and we, we just thank you, Father, that, um, you know, to have this opportunity in this moment to be able to come together and talk, speak about you, speak about your daughters, speak about your sons, the, the princesses and the kings of this earth. I thank you that you enlighten us um, to let us see that we're kings and the women they're princesses and that it, that we have to come back to you father we have to uh, have our lives our lives right we have to uh seek you evermore asking for forgiveness asking for repentance to get back on the right path of righteousness so that we can be um, risen up and in, in your might and your power and your glory we thank you this evening again um May you give us a peaceful night tonight. Um, and uh, tomorrow's not promised, but uh, we thank you for the endeavors that you have for us to uh, carry out and that we seek out in life. And you bless it, Father. I ask this in the mighty name of Yahweh Shah name. Um, and I pray. And your name we praise always, forever, Yahweh Basha. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, Shalom, Makiyama. It's been a pleasure as always. And um, I would go all out. See you guys back here next Thursday. Shalom, 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 Man, it was a great night for me. I ain't gonna lie. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. Likewise, brother. Likewise, man. Everybody's take care. Shalom. Shalom. Job 316. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel.